Hello and welcome to our channel. In this video, we're going to be covering the topic metastasis. We will talk about ways for cancer to metastasize, classical roots of metastasis, and the classification of metastasis. A metastasis occurs when cancer cells spread from their original location, known as the primary tumor site. From here, they spread to other parts of the body. This spread occurs when cancer cells detach from the primary tumor and then travel through the blood system or the lymphatic system. Once these cells reach distant organs or tissues, they continue to grow there and that's what we call then a metastasis. This is also the reason why a metastasis is made up of the same cells as the primary tumor and thereby a biopsy of a metastasis can tell us which primary tumor a patient might have. Because sometimes we find a metastasis in a patient before we even know that he or she actually has cancer or what type of cancer he or she has. However, unfortunately, there is limitation to this. Some cancer cells become so altered that they lose the distinct features of their original tissue. This is then known as an undifferentiated cancer. When a metastasis is composed of undifferentiated cells, it can be very difficult to determine where the cancer originated from. In which ways can a cancer metastasize? There are a few different routes of metastasis. The two classically described ones I already mentioned, being the hematogenic spread and the lymphatic spread. So to recap, the hematogenic spread of cancer cells occurs when a primary tumor invades a blood vessel and releases some of its cells into that blood vessel. The cancer cells will then go with the blood flow to another organ, such as the liver or the lungs, and will settle down there, thereby creating a metastasis. The lymphatic spread is essentially the same just that a primary tumor will then invade a lymphatic vessel and the cancer cells will travel not to another organ but to another lymph node rather and multiply there. That's why it is important for us to know the pathways, the blood and lymphatic fluid and where it goes in the body. Another way of metastasis is the iatrogenic route. This is the unintentional spread of cancer cells during medical procedures, such as, for example, surgery or biopsies. While precautions are taken to minimize this risk, it can still occur in rare cases. In this case, a metastasis will form in the pathway that, for example, the biopsy needle took to reach the primary tumor site. Cancers that are known to more commonly cause metastasis in this way are sarcomas and ovarian tumors. Another way of metastasis is called transcellomic. This route involves the direct spread of cancer cells within body cavities, such as the peritoneal cavity, the pleural cavity, or the pericardial cavity. It occurs when cancer cells penetrate the surfaces of these cavities and spread to other organs within them. Ovarian cancer, for example, often spreads through the peritoneal cavity. The last route of metastasis I want to mention is the direct invasion of other structures. It is not really a metastasis since those are usually at more distant sites, but it is a way for cancer to spread. How can we classify metastasis? The most common way to classify a tumor and its metastasis is via the TNM classification, in which T stands for tumor and usually describes the size and extent of the primary tumor, N stands for node and describes which lymph nodes are involved, and M stands for metastasis and usually refers to organs that a cancer has spread to distally. The T and M vary for each type of tumor and can be checked in a freely available PDF book. The T classification ranges from T0, which means no evidence of primary tumor, to T4, being a large tumor or invasion of nearby structures. 
then there are subdivisions indicating increasing tumor size or invasion. The N classification range from N0, meaning no regional lymph node metastasis, to N3, which is then extensive lymph node involvement. There is also subdivisions reflecting the number and location of involved lymph nodes depending on the cancer type. To end this video, I would like to give you an overview of where certain cancers have the tendency to metastasize to. It is true that while cancer can spread to virtually any part of the body, certain cancer types have a higher propensity to metastasize to specific locations. Here is a general overview of common metastasis sites. A common site for metastasis is the skeletal system, our bones. The bones are a common site for metastasis and they are frequently affected by breast, prostate, lung, kidney and thyroid cancers. These type of cancers then form either osteolytic or osteoblastic bone lesions. Osteolytic meaning they break down bone and osteoblastic lesions meaning they build bone onto pre-existing bone structures. The liver is also an organ we very often see metastasis to. It is commonly involved in metastasis from colorectal cancer, stomach cancer, pancreatic and breast cancers. The lungs as well is a frequent site for metastasis from breast, colorectal, prostate, kidney and sarcomas. Sometimes we also see metastasis to the brain and if we see a brain metastasis we often think about cancers from the lung, the breast, melanoma, so skin cancer, as well as kidney cancers. We should not forget that many cancers spread first to regional lymph nodes as they are part of the lymphatic system, a primary pathway for cancer spread. The last site of metastasis I want to mention is the peritoneum. This is the lining of the abdominal cavity. Think about it as a bag containing our abdominal organs and it is often affected by ovarian, colon and stomach cancers and then we call it a peritoneal carcinosis. That's all for this video. I hope it was very helpful. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video. Feel free to subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comment what other topics you want to see us make a video about. Thank you.